Hi everyone. I just want to welcome you to our presentation on license plate recognition. The technology is ready. Are you presented by Parallel Technologies? I'm Maddie Olson. I am the marketing and communications specialist here, and we are really glad that you have all hopped on to join us today. Just a couple of reminders. There is a live Q&A that's going to be monitored by me. So if you have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to type them in the little box to the right of your screen, and I will make sure that they get answered for you. Uh, next, we will be recording this event, and it's going to be made available to anybody who registered. So when you receive it tonight or tomorrow, feel free to forward that on to any colleagues who may find this information helpful or interesting. Moving along, I want to introduce Mark Bondi. He is the Director of Sales and Marketing here at Parallel Technologies. He has over 16 years of experience in the physical security marketplace, and he's been with Parallel uh, for over six years now. He's pretty excited to share everything that he knows about automatic license plate recognition, and we're ready to roll. So go ahead and take it away, Mark. Thank you, Madison. It is good to be here, and I am excited to present on license plate recognition. It's an exciting technology, and we're seeing a lot of our clients uh, deploying this technology uh, really across the spectrum from a vertical perspective. So we're excited about what it can do and how it can help improve uh, security and, and other operational performances. From a presentation perspective, uh, this is not an exhaustive deep dive into automated license plate recognition. Our, our goal today is really to uh, put out the framework of where the market is, where the technology is, what types of problems are being solved. Uh, there is plenty more to learn. Uh, so at the end of this presentation, there's uh, the contact information of our sales team. We'd love to connect with you, talk more about what's what the capabilities are, how it can be deployed, and get into the specifics of your situation. Uh, we're going to run through, you know, in relatively short order, uh, a parallel overview, an overview of where the market came from, uh, the investigative effectiveness of this, how ALPR can be deployed and what those workflows look like. We're going to get into a little bit on machine learning and how that's really changing uh, the delivery mechanisms and, and just how well this tool can be used. Uh, and then we're going to conclude with parking lots and then lastly uh, move into Minnesota laws and what those look like. So I'm going to dive in. Uh, time is ticking, so we're going to move. Uh, parallel, we empower people through intelligent buildings. Uh, this is our practice. We have uh, you know, a number of technologies to help people manage their buildings uh, and bring it, that intelligence to them. Our team of professionals from sales, project management, engineering, technicians, service and support, we want to help our clients to achieve the outcomes that they're looking for and to help guide them through the technologies from the design phase to the implementation phase to the day two support as to how this technology works. Moving into the meat of the presentation, automated license plate recognition uh, uses optical character recognition to automate uh, reading of license plates. This really drives into they're going to read them for you versus hey we have to go back into our video surveillance system to find that data there's two types of deployment options uh, stationary which uses cameras at a fixed point like the one that you see on the slide here or mobile where we are attaching uh, license plate readers to mobile vehicles and then driving them around. Uh, for the most part, we're going to focus on the stationary, but a lot of the same rules apply on the mobile. And if you want to go deeper on mobile, we can definitely help you with that. Uh, from a history perspective, ALPR uh, was invented in 1946, and you saw trial deployments in Europe in the late 1970s. So this technology has been around for a while. Uh, you started to see some commercial investment in it, and the first stolen car uh, arrest was made in 1981. Uh, through the years, though, a couple of decades there, there was relatively little uh, from a technology gain perspective and minimal investments in it. Uh, but the increase in commercial viability came in the 2000s um, and you got the first documented murder solved in 2005. So the technology really began to build steam and momentum around that time and at this stage of the game there are a number of different global manufacturers producing both the hardware elements and the software elements uh, and the there are agencies around the world that are using this technology on a daily basis. 
And, and really they're using it because it has a, a high degree of effectiveness. From an investigative perspective, we're able to collect data, get the vehicle type, get the data, and be able to uh, drive into that, uh, that information and, and leverage it to close cases. We can search databases and really gives law enforcement the ability to solve crimes faster. Uh, and that ultimately reduces crime in the long haul as we're able to solve uh, these crimes. And this has been the traditional method is law enforcement has been the main driver uh, behind utilization of this technology. And as time has gone on in, in, in recent years, it's moving beyond law enforcement agencies. And this has been driven by open platform video management software uh, as this technologies come into the mainstream over the last 16 years since I've been in the market, uh, it's easier to add on uh, license plate recognition to an existing system. And it's reducing the total cost of ownership where I don't have to deploy a separate system. I use it as part of my broader video management software that I'm deploying in my campus. You've also seen camera manufacturers really create uh, different models that can then be deployed uh, for use within these this arena. As this is going on, we get unification with other business systems. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about this as the presentation goes on, but we can use LPR as a credential. We can trigger lockdowns with it. We can include it as part of our emergency management. We can tie it into response tools like Genetech Mission Control, where we can create processes of if-then scenarios around where the uh, what to do with that information. We've seen expanded use cases. This is a really big deal with, with, with the market being able to adopt it, more use cases exist. So now we're able to see uh, K-12, higher education, corporate real estate, and I'm using that as a broad spectrum. I mean, that could include manufacturing facilities, banking, using it to uh, enhance customer service. Same thing with casinos, the high roller rolls in, now we can apply a notification. Healthcare, so there, there are a number of different avenues that this technology can be used to really improve security and safety, as well as operational efficiency. One of the things that's happening with license plate readers is we're pushing uh, the boundary of the facility and pushing that out to the edges. So we're moving our ability to recognize threats uh, at the edges of our facilities, of our campuses. And, and it also allows us to get that plate data so we can have actionable information, whether that's to automate the process. Hey, if this plate shows up, I want to do this or if it's to streamline investigative response. I wanna look for this plate. When was this here? Uh, I saw this plate, now I wanna find when the video was here from you know, days past, et cetera. Uh, we're also able to track lot data, occupancy data to create better planning and decision making. I uh, heard a use case the other day where a client had used the license plate data to uh, not proceed with building a parking lot because of the occupancy that that parking lot had. So that data becomes important in being able to make facility decisions that can ultimately save people uh, money and, and headache, et cetera. From a workflow perspective, it, it all starts with the reading of the plate. And this is automated, as I said, and we're first starting with, we're gonna capture the plate at the field of view. No trigger needing, the cameras are gonna do this, the software is gonna enable that. Um, the camera is going to make, you know, multiple decisions and the software is going to make decisions to, to read and compare, combining results to give you the most optimal uh, read on the plate. From the analysis stage, we move to the compare. And this is where the tool gets to be really powerful as we're able to provide lists in the system to say, here are employees, here's subcontractors, here's visitors, here's unwanted vehicles, here's former employees. Uh, and, and those lists can be customized to your liking uh, and you can create whatever action items you wanna be able to have out of those in this React phase. So we can provide instant notification and we can pop an alert when the, domestic dispute shows up or the terminate an employee or the known threat hits your facility, we can create an alert. We can also trigger action. So we can send an email, we can record uh, video, we can move PTZs, activate an alarm, open a gate. Uh, really the, the possibilities from a reaction perspective uh, 
are, are really limitless. You just need to think through what those workflows are. And from there, you're able to create those reactions uh, and automate those processes. And then lastly, as part of this, we're able to record that data and report on it. All of the data sits within the system. We can get license plate number, when vehicles were there, the detection states, actions, and we can search by those things. We can look up that data. We can have automated reports sent out to particular people, et cetera. Um, we're also able to associate LPR data with other elements of our security system, whether that's your video surveillance, your access control, some third party application. We can create these correlations between our systems uh, that can streamline our ability to, uh, to do things. Uh, whatever you, uh, goal you're trying to accomplish with it, we can create those if then scenarios and drive that process in an automated fashion. One of the common ones that we're seeing is uh license plates as a credential this is becoming more and more a thing for us and we've seen a number of deployments here over the last couple of years where instead of needing to use your uh car credential to get into the parking lot now i can use my license plate so if we work through the workflow it's a relatively simple process where the car pulls up that car is registered in our system, ABC123. That belongs to Mark Bondi. That's identified as a credential, goes through the system, and creates an event to action where now the gate is open. Um, voila, I don't have to use my card. I show up and I am let in to that parking lot. As part of that, we're able to report on that in a live manner. So now I can see, oh, Mark just showed up. Here's his access. Here's him showing up with his credential. And I can associate that to video at the gate, potentially put that into an, uh, an, an automated uh, intercom system or a intercom system where I can press the button if I have some form of an issue and be able to communicate back and forth. But I can ultimately be able to see that video, react to that video, um, and, and store that video in that credential and that person to verify that they were there. You know, as we look at the marketplace, one of the things that's happening is we're seeing a lot of smart people solving big problems. So through the 1980s, 1990s, there was relatively uh, minimal uh, capital pushing into this marketplace. Um, that started to change in the 2000s and has evolved even greater over the course of the last, let's call it five years, as more smart people are solving bigger problems with better tools. Uh, and we're gonna talk about the impact of that in the slides ahead, but the real challenge with license plate recognition and automating that process is being able to read the plates. Uh, there are no standard plates around the world. I mean, you look at the graphic that I that I found out there, you know, every state is different, has a different format, has a different lettering structure, has different reflective characteristics. You extend that beyond uh, the US into global markets, and you have different uh, characters from different languages. Uh, and, and, and that becomes a challenge as to how do manufacturers keep up with those varying plate requirements and those plate changes. Um, I know Minnesota just continues to roll out new plates for different uh, needs, and that makes it difficult when people are using the traditional methods of reading plates. And that traditional method is the optical character recognition. And that's really just comparing uh, the letters, numbers that are being captured by the camera to kind of a, a key, right? And then they are matching those things and making it kind of come together so it automates the process. That process requires a lot of programming time. So in the past, you'd have to have a lot of programmers on staff to be able to add on plates, look at plates, correct systems, et cetera. Uh, and that ultimately inhibits scale and creates uh, less than ideal uh, reads and effectiveness of the license plate readers themselves. What's changed here is deep learning, AI, machine learning. Uh, people use these terms very interchangeable, interchangeably, but deep learning systems are going to use a neural network um, and they're going to that are trained for LPR. 
and it, it creates a multiple step process. And I, I've met with people that do this work. Um, I am not one of them. Uh, I, I, I like to say these are the smart people solving the big problems, which I have on the slide up top. Uh, because they're building these algorithms to find and learn how these plates functions, how they are read, and they can get a tremendous amount of work done using these uh, learning algorithms to read the plates. Um, it's more accurate than the OCR and more resilient to variation. It can respond faster to changes in the environment. Uh, it deals better with things like smudges, plate variations, lighting changes, different angles, etc. And it's used in conjunction with the optical, optical, optical character recognition uh, process, ultimately creating uh, a more resilient and better product uh, for the marketplace, which makes everybody's job easier as more data is available uh, and the data is uh, better uh, for companies to be able to use, law enforcement to be able to use. Um, so machine Mark, learning, yep. Mark. OK, couple questions that actually right. come up. Um, the in. first one is uh, how often are there false positives in reading these plates? There will be a answer to that in the slide ahead. Um, okay. That is getting reduced um, and you can kind of look at it from read accuracy as, as one metric. How often are the read accuracy is? And then there's, hey, we just misread and, and it's, it was ABC125. But ABC 12S came up. Um, those false positives are being greatly reduced through machine learning. OK, thank you. And then the next question, the final question I have here is from an access control perspective where we can give people access to a parking lot um, just from reading their their license plate. Is yep. there any issue with having if someone has multiple cars that they drive in? Yeah, the limitation uh, with the software that we sell is three. Um, so you can have three different vehicles that are tied to that credential. OK, thank you. So and if people got more than three vehicles, I mean, God bless them. That's it. That is it. All right, thank you. Um, thanks for jumping in. Uh, machine learning equals more data. So as this machine learning has become a bigger part of uh, the manufacturer's process, they're using this, they're driving more outcomes from that. Uh, the first is vehicle color. Uh, the, the cameras are now able to associate vehicle color, which becomes extremely helpful in being able to search for the red car that was in the parking lot. We can reduce um, you know, the number of things to search for. If we only have uh, a color of a vehicle. We're also able to move into vehicle type. Is it a motorcycle? Is it a bus? Is it a van? Is it a pickup truck? Uh, and that accuracy of this type of recognition continues to improve. Uh, vehicle speed. Um, I'm seeing a college campus that uses this um, to track vehicle speed on a long stretch of road that they have into their campus. Uh, they're not necessarily writing tickets per se using vehicle speed, but hey, we saw that you were driving, you know, 10 miles above the speed limit on this road. Please slow down. Uh, really begins to influence behavior. Uh, plate state and origin. Um, now we're able to say, hey, this is from Minnesota. Here's where here's where uh, this has been brought from. Um, we're also seeing, and it's not on the slide, and I don't note it anywhere else in the presentation, but we're also seeing uh, the vehicle uh, make. So being able to say, hey, that's a Mercedes Benz, that's a Toyota, that's a Tesla, uh, and this is all being enabled by machine learning. So now we can search through our our system and say, hey, I want to look for all of the Toyotas, or I want to look for all of the Mercedes Benz. Uh, that allows us to quickly and efficiently find uh, the vehicles that were in our spaces, especially if we don't have uh, license plate data for that vehicle. Uh, and better data. This is one of the questions that was asked uh, just a minute ago. False positives is the one at the bottom there, 1.6% to now down to 0.1%. Um, and there's some data behind this as far as how many vehicles, et cetera, that this was study was done on. But we're seeing this movement. Um, this is a specific one for the Genetech camera, but we're seeing this movement of uh, results across manufacturers as they focus 
on using machine learning to drive better outputs. Um, so what's the capture rate? How many captures are we supposed to, are we able to get? What's the perfect read rate? It gets every character uh, perfectly fuzzy matchable. Um, sometimes when you have like eyes and ones, et cetera, those become fuzzy matchable situations where, where it has to make a decision. Um, and it, the, the system is getting smarter at providing uh, that insight. And then false positives are being reduced as well. Um, and these numbers, you know, are, are being done in, in a time frame uh, that in the past, I, I was talking to one of the developers, um, in the past to move the capture rate up a half a percentage took lots and lots of time. Now with machine learning, they're able to get, you know, bigger gains in faster time. So this should create less headaches, less false positives, more accurate data, which makes this, the technology easier to use, easier to implement, et cetera. Parking lot data becomes the other piece, and this is the software layer that, that sits on the backside, being able to drive uh, reporting, visualization, integration with your security system to be able to see what's going on in the parking lot. And if you have time limits on a lot, you can create things like violations. Hey, here are the violations. Here's when people have come in. Uh, we can visualize what our occupancy is at. We can visualize the cameras in this particular spaces um, and, and really get data uh, around how our parking lots are being used. Also drive into proactive management to be able to say, hey, here is where people are parking. Are we, are we at capacity? Yep, we're at the airport level. Layer one, we got two spots, but layer five, we have you know, a lot of spots available. Uh, this then can be communicated back out on a display to be able to show people, hey, here's where you wanna go. Here's where you can, uh, you can park efficiently without having to look for that one spot uh, in the basement level. I know I always drive to, you know, I'll probably move to that 63. I'll be at level four if I'm driving that. Uh, and that data becomes, <clears throat> Uh, real time. So as people drive in, as people drive out, we're able to proactively manage, see what is happening uh, within our space. We can also report on that data historically to be able to say, hey, here are the number of cars that we're seeing in a day. Here are uh, the number of, of, of vehicles that are coming in compared to our capacity. And that in turn allows us to make decisions around what we're doing with these spaces, what we're thinking about from a construction perspective, et cetera. Moving forward in the presentation, um, you know, I, I, I get a lot of questions around what the laws are related to uh, storing video from license plate, using video from license plate, et cetera. Um, so I wanted to put this slide out there to give people a better understanding of, of the research we've done and what we've seen. Uh, my, my first point though, before I go into the, the, the slide detail is, we are not here as lawyers. I'm not a lawyer. Uh, so consult the BCA for language, consult your counsel as to how you want to manage these things. Uh, but, but here's what we have found. Uh, first, there's a general requirement, regardless of whether you're a private institution, a public institution, a law enforcement institution, which requires 60 days of retention. So you cannot store license plate recognition data for longer than 60 days unless someone is charged with a crime. So you have to be purging your system of that data on a 60 day basis uh, in order to be in compliance with the law. In addition to kind of those general requirements, which are uh, across the board, law enforcement has additional requirements that are upon them to be able to manage license plate system. First, uh, they have to inform the BCA that they have an ALPR camera, that it exists. It's on 5th and 1st, that has to be uh, reported to the BCA, and then the BCA then in turn makes that data public. So if you go to the BCA's website, you'll be able to find every ALPR camera in the state that is used by law enforcement. Uh, agencies also need to keep a public log of how their agency is using that data and deploying that data across, that, across their, um, across their city. Uh, so that data has got to be out there. There's got to be kind of that back end uh, process that needs to be uh, supplied to the BCA. Uh, access to the data 
uh, has to be protected. You can't have anybody and everybody accessing the data. Uh, you need written permission from the chief legal officer uh, within that entity to be able to access the data and use that data. Um, you know, my, my final bullet there is, you know, ensuring that your system can meet these requirements is really important. Who are you giving access to? What are your protocols? How are you ensuring that these are being followed? I think are really important, specifically with that, making sure that the authorized personnel um, is getting just the data that they need. And really these laws are created so, um, you know, there's there's reason rationale behind people accessing um, the license plate data. Uh, you can't just go out and search for a random place driving down a particular highway uh, because you want to. You need some type of reason to be able to manage that. And that moves us towards the end of the presentation. And, and like I said at the beginning, this is not an exhaustive, detailed, uh, dive into license plate recognition. There's more to be learned. There's more to talk about. There are specifics as to you know what your particular needs are. Um, and we would love to work with you on those uh, those needs. Uh, and, and I think the best place to do that is our lab. Uh, Parallel has three working LPR cameras, uh, one inside the lab, two outside of our building that allow us to, to show how this can be used, create various scenarios. We also have a display, if you see that wooden piece in the middle, let's see if I can play it, uh, where we can show how fast these plates can be read. Uh, the technology has really improved to the point where uh, the human eye can't see the, the movement of that plate, uh, but the camera can pick up that plate. So we got great demonstrations, the ability to show off how this technology can be used. And then we have a sales team that can work with you uh, around defining those needs, understanding those requirements, and figuring out what the best technology solution for your application is. Uh, in my experience, uh, there's obviously a lot of similarities across organizations, uh, but typically there are particulars within each organization, things they're trying to accomplish. Uh, and we're here to listen, understand, ask questions, and get to a design that really makes sense and can help your business to move forward. Uh, like Madison said, uh, this presentation is going to be sent out to you all so you can review it. Uh, you can also talk to any one of these uh, people on our sales team uh, to schedule a time in our lab uh, to talk more about what the technology can do and really uh, get answers to the questions that you may have. So we appreciate you joining us today. Thank you for your time. Uh, we look forward to helping you with your license plate recognition needs and whatever other needs you have from a technology building perspective in the future. Thank you very much. Madison, any any last questions? Nothing that I saw come through, so we're Perfect. good to go. Thank you so much for your time, everyone. Enjoy uh, the rest of the day.